Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah? Okay, good evening. My name is uh, Chris Crawford. I'm a senior construction manager with Four Creeks. We've been hired on behalf of the city of Visalia to manage construction of the Ocean and Emory intersection improvement project. Really appreciate everybody taking their time tonight to stop by and kind of hear what we're doing with the construction portion of the project. First off, all. Uh, Throws up a little bit here. There we go. Uh, first off, I'll do introductions of our project team. Um, also with Four Creeks is Ian Williams. He's going to be our field inspector on the project, and he's going to be out there probably 90% of the time. So, I mean, if you guys see any concerns at the project site, you can find Ian out there and talk to him about anything that you're concerned about. Um, in the city of Visalia, we have Steve Weatherly, he's the project manager on behalf of the city of Visalia. Uh, we've also got some other city of Visalia staff here. We got Nick Messia back there in the back, community development director. We got Randy Bloom here, city manager. Um, and then we also have Mitch Kocharian here. <laughs> and I had to ask him how to pronounce his name this morning, right? So I made sure I get it right here. Um, he's with Abbotson Construction. He's going to be the project manager for the construction portion for the contractor. Now, the city of Visalia is greatly looking forward to enhancing the traffic circulation on the northwest side of town for this project. Uh, we've been looking forward to this project for a long time. Just to give you kind of a brief overview on some of the improvements we're going to be making to the intersection is we're going to um, add some dedicated right turn pockets on Denver E, kind of help that traffic move out of the way of some of the through lanes. We're going to widen the existing railroad crossing. So City of Visalia has worked pretty significantly with the railroad for a number of years yeah. to get the um, permits and everything in line for the railroad to actually widen that crossing and improve that crossing. So it's going to open up that whole intersection for us. Uh, we're going to be providing three northbound receiving traffic lanes on Denver North of the railroad. So it's going to open up quite a bit now compared to the bottleneck that we have right there now. We're also going to add some double left turn pockets on the ocean, which should help move some of those left turn uh, folks out of the true travel lanes and help keep traffic moving pretty smooth. You know, the city just continues to plan for the future by installing traffic signal interconnect, which we're also installing on this project. And we're installing it from the Dimmery and Ocean intersection to the Dimmery and Fergus intersection. Um, and they'll probably have a future project that puts fiber optic lines actually inside that conduit to kind of interconnect those traffic signals so they work together. So we're looking forward to some you know, future efficiencies with that. And we're kind of planning for that with this project. Sure. Yeah, for some reason we're having a little bit of technical difficulties with the pointer here. Here we go. All right, yay, we got it. Okay, is that the one you want, Dave? Yeah, the second bullet point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nick was just pointing out that we do have a Spanish language interpreter. Nora, raise your hand. There's Nora. Anybody that uh, needs Spanish language help? Correct, yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Do you want to you wanna come up here, Nora, and announce that in Spanish? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Come on up here and ask that So we do have an interpreter. We're at the end of the once we get to the end of the presentation, we're going to have a question and answer period, and Nora's going to help out with um, any interpretation during that period. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Nora Flores, and I'm here uh, with Nancy Lasquez. Can you hear me? No, he wants you to say it in Spanish. Oh, in Spanish. Okay. Uh, soy Nora Flores. Y estoy aquí en parte de la Lockwood Agency con la señora Nancy Lockwood aquí. Y si tiene preguntas después de la junta, pues yo les ayudo. Te voy a estar acá atrás. Muchas gracias. Thanks, Nora. Just kind of moving on here. We'll see if we can get this thing going right. This is. Um, this is kind of the completed intersection layout. So just to show you some of the improvements that we talked about on the last slide, you picked up the handout on your way in. This picture is also out in your handout. Um, we got double left turn pockets. They're gonna be here on Goshen on both sides. 
We have significant widening here on Demarie at the railroad crossing, new railroad crossing, new railroad signal arms, signal crossings, new um, traffic signal for the intersection, and dedicated right turn lanes here on Demarie. You'll see our three like northbound receiving lanes up here. Um, and then we've got the traffic signal interconnect also that's not shown on here. It's going to go from Demery and Yoshi to Demery and Ferguson. So this is kind of what your completed intersection is going to look like at the end of the project. You know, just some general comments about the dates and the information that are being provided tonight. Um, the dates shown on everything that you have are kind of tentative right now. We're working with the subcontractors, the utility companies, the railroad to kind of finalize dates. So the dates you see on some of the phasing information you've been given on the schedule is kind of just tentative right now. Um, the work hours shown on there are also, they're allowable work hours the contractor can work with um, when they're affecting traffic. It doesn't mean they have to work those full work hours that are on there. They've got the opportunity to work those if they need to. Uh, just like any, any construction project, you know, a lot of times we come up with um, kind of unforeseen situations. So the phasing and the schedule and the traffic control may be modified during the project, um, kind of as needed to fit field conditions and to kind of like help the, the project progress smoothly. There's been a lot of coordination done on this project. Um, we've coordinated with all the city services, so solid waste, basically garbage, uh, transit, city fire, city police. Uh, we've done we've been coordination with my Slate Unified School District also and a lot of others just to make sure this project goes as smoothly as possible. And during construction, um, one of the things that you know you can look at if you're driving through the intersection is we're going to have the portable interchangeable message signs up on each leg of the intersection, which are kind of the big flashing signs that have words on them that you see on most construction projects. So and we're going to be announcing uh, different phases of constructions on those message boards also. So just pay attention if you're driving through that, that project area over there. As part of this project, the, in order to keep the traffic flowing as smoothly as we can, uh, the city is going to keep the traffic signals operational for um, the entire duration of the project at Demory and Ocean is the plan, just to keep, try and keep traffic moving through that intersection the best we can. And access is going to be provided to adjacent properties um, on the project. So we're going to be working with a lot of the affected property owners where their frontages are going to be removed and replaced. Uh, but access is going to be provided, and access is going to be provided to uh, Daryl's mini storage right there too throughout construction. Kind of moving on a little bit to um, kind of our phasing plan for construction. Uh, phase one is going to be a little bit more of a minimal impact to the public. So what we're doing is mainly shoulder and utility work with lane closures. And those lane closures are going to be 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, so we're trying to avoid the peak times in the morning and in the afternoon. The contractor is going to pull traffic control back like uh, at 4 o'clock every afternoon and get that out of the roadway to try and prep for the kind of afternoon peak. The work areas you see are kind of shown in blue here. I kind of use the pointer, kind of shown in blue out on the shoulders. Um, and we're anticipating construction start date right now is going to be July 9th, and we're expecting phase one to go through mid October. And again, this will be like relatively minimal impact compared to some of the impacts you're going to see later on in the project. Phase two of the project is kind of going to be a big impact for just a very short period of time. Uh, we've got the railroad crossing work, which is going to be a lot of the surface improvements that the railroad is going to do. Um, they're going to be removing and replacing the tracks that are right here across the intersection. So Demarie is going to be closed for a weekend closure from Friday at 7 p.m. to Monday at 10 a.m. And the railroad's uh, contractor just basically works 24 hours a day until they get the work done. So to try and minimize the, clo the road closure and minimize the effects to the public. So during that time period when this is closed, we'll have posted detour routes up for people to use. Um, and we're also going to have, um, Daryl's Mini Store will stay open right there. And we're also going to have the drive approach for the Country Club Plaza Shopping Center open. But um, south of Houston, right in this area, is mainly just going to be traffic with these parcels right here. It's not going to be any free traffic. We're anticipating this work right now to be like mid to late July is when we're expecting the railroad to do their work. 
And just keep your eye on the message support signs that are on the project site, because we'll have that up when we're going to do this demo closure. Um, all these, the phasing on this project um, was approved by the city council as well, so there's been a lot of input um, provided on it. Uh, phase three is um, a lot of the median work on Demory um, to install the new median, to put in like the railroad signal crossing arms that are going to be out in the middle of Demory. And once we hit this phase of construction, uh, northbound Demory is going to turn into kind of one lane right here. So from this point forward, I mean, you're probably going to want to, if you're going northbound, you're going to want to try and find the alternate route because um, it's going to be kind of difficult getting through there. Um, Work hours for this phase of construction are Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We're anticipating this phase to be from like late August to mid-September. Uh, work area is kind of shown in red, and again, we're going to keep access to the properties that are right here. Phase four is going to be um, a lot of corner and continued median work. There's going to be lane closures that are involved with this. Northbound Demory is still going to continue to be one lane because we've got a lot of work that the city's contractor has to do and that the, um, the railroad signal contractor has to do kind of in this one area right here. So in the work areas are kind of highlighted in red. Uh, major objective of this phase is to get the traffic signals all installed, get the railroad signals installed, get a lot of improvements done at the corners. And work hours for this phase are Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, we're expecting this phase to be mid-September to early October. Um, so and then I guess we're going on to phases five and six of the project are the biggest impacts to the public by far. Um, what we're doing with these phases is this is basically like the major portion of the street reconstruction work on Demory. So for phase five, the east half of Demory is going to be closed along with Goshen being closed right here because there's going to be a full reconstruction, street reconstruction of those portions. Um, Demory uh, south of Houston is going to be, just be southbound only. So south of Goshen, we're just going to have northbound turning like west down Goshen. Um, this is going to for sure be the biggest impact for the public. There's always going to be a lot of advanced notice on this one. There's going to be message boards up at the project site. Um, and we're going to have detour routes posted during the time we have these closures. But for sure during this period, uh, you know, the public, you're going to want to use alternate routes whenever possible for this because it's going to be really, really congested at the intersection. Work hours for this stage are Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We're anticipating the work to be from early October to early November. Phase six is the other kind of big impact to the project, and that's going to be the street re reconstruction work on the west side of the marine. And that's shown by kind of the shaded portion in blue right here on the uh, drawing. And what we're going to be doing is um, Goshen's going to be closed again. We'll have detour routes posted. Um, Demory is going to be just north down during this time period. So um, we'll have detour routes posted, and you just want to if you're going northbound or going southbound, you just have to find, you want to find a different route to use out there. We're anticipating that this portion of the work is going to be early November to mid-December. We're going to have a phase seven that's also included in the project, but I don't really have a slide for it. There's a lot of the cleanup work out there um, at the project site. So we're going to see the contractor making just a bunch of repairs and doing a lot of finishing improvements at the project site. Expecting probably lane closures and pretty minimal impact to the public. So just some alternate routes for you um, during construction. So I think a lot of people are aware that a lot of the white science, you know, Acres and Mooney are our probably biggest north-south connectors to the ocean. Um, you know, also encouraging people to use Ferguson and Riggin. Uh, we're going to have detour routes posted for each phase, but you know, in some situations, you may want to just take a look at where you live out there, and it may be worthwhile to go backwards a little bit and try and get where you're going, just to kind of try and avoid the intersection and minimize the amount of traffic that's going to the intersection. Just some additional alternate, some additional alternate routes. Um, 
out there at the project site, uh, kind of even further out besides the other slide that we were talking about. You have alternate routes to um, sure SR63 Dynuba Boulevard is like a pretty good, you know, pretty good wide road out there. Sometimes that's uh, relative to be relatively quick. And using Highway 198, all those are real good alternatives just to kind of keep away from the intersection. And at this point, I'll go ahead and hand it over to uh, Nancy Lockwood, who's going to kind of go over some ways to stay informed during construction, besides just what we have on the construction portion of the project. Well, we have the tender for the yes, before I get into that, if you don't mind, could you raise your hand and tell me how you found out about this meeting just for our ongoing education? How many of you are here because of the direct mail piece? How about uh, Facebook? Facebook? And um, oh, online yeah. events? Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Online events? No? Direct mail. Okay, very good. I thought it was junk mail first. <laughs> <laughs> no, we call it direct mail. <laughs> um, okay, so in addition to um, the, the things that um, Chris was talking about, if you wait until you get to the message board, you're already in the middle of the intersection. So my job is to help you understand that there's lots of other ways to get the information so that you can plan ahead and avoid the frustration that, that we all feel when we are stuck in traffic. So uh, mobile alerts are a really nice way to receive information if you are um, you know, cell phone friendly. You text Goshen to Marie to that number and then you are subscribed to the program that we are using. So we will be regularly updating um, reminding folks about where we are on the project. If there's something unusual that comes along, that is the way you're going to find out um, as real time as it's humanly possible. So if you if you need any help um, while you're here and you have your cell phone, I have uh, two staff members back there who can help you um, get signed up through that program. We use that in other uh, transportation outreach kinds of things and it's very effective. Um, then there is also uh, the traditional social media, uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. We are utilizing all of those, so whichever handle you are the most comfortable with, assuming that you do social media, these are options for you as well. And then on the city's website, if you go to visalia.city to Goshen Demarie, you'll go directly to the page that Allison from the city of Visalia has set up. And so we are going to be in regular communication throughout this whole process, trying to use all of these outreach tools so that we can keep you as informed as humanly possible. And then if there is some need for 24 hour contact during construction, that's your phone number. If something should happen um, in, okay, if something should happen during, um, during the night and you feel like you need to let somebody know right away, that's your number. Yes. Can you include next door neighbor on your social media? Contact? Sure. Happy to do that. That's how I found out this. Okay. Great. Okay. That's the Nancy, end of it. So. And this is going to be available. This oh, this presentation. Yes, we'll put this presentation on the city's website just in case you need to refer back to it. Um, but as Chris said, it's a very, very complex project, and the staging is going to change. There are always adjustments that have to be made along the way, but. But this gives you a good a good idea of what the plan is. Yeah. Thanks, Nancy. Let me flip back just a couple of more slides and go over a couple of things that there may or may be questions on. Um, you know, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of an update about what's going on with some current city projects. Uh, right now, the I think the railroad very shortly is going to be improving the railroad track crossing. Um, here at Acres and Goshen, that's been an issue for quite a while. So, and that work is supposed to be tentatively right now, July 7th and 8th, from what I'm told. Um, so, that's supposed to get done right before we start the other construction project, which should work out pretty well. So, another construction project that you guys have probably seen if you live in this area is the Houston Avenue Street Improvement Project right here. Um, the paving is just finishing up on that right now for the stretch from Demery to Mooney. Um, and the striping will occur probably shortly after the Demery and Goshen project starts, but we're anticipating all the lanes to be opened up again on Houston between Demery and Mooney before the Demery and Goshen project starts. So that should help out um, 
the public quite a bit, being able to move through there a little bit better than we are right now. Um, the Houston Avenue project is continuing eastbound right here, east of Mooney, um, and they're gonna continue doing the same thing they did on the other portion of the street, removing and replacing the asphalt, and kind of just improving the roadway. Um, I think that's anticipated the section from Mooney to uh, where it ends. I think over on that view was anticipated to be done by end of August. So the city planned that out like really well as far as like avoiding the major impacts for Dillery and Goshen and getting that Houston project done before the big Dillery and Goshen impact. So hopefully that'll cut down a little bit on um, some of the questions related to those projects. Starting off, the, uh, we're going to go ahead and start off the question period and just wanted to say, uh, you know, the city asks that you keep your comments brief and positive. Creative criticism presented with appropriate courtesy is welcome. Um, and I guess what we're asking from the public is um, for this portion of the question period, we just ask that we keep questions like directly related to the construction portion of the Emory and Goshen project. We're going to have a number of city staff members and um, also a contractor, myself, we'll be like here afterwards if people have questions related to um, kind of other projects or um, anything else that they would like to discuss with the city. So with that, we'll kind of open it up to anybody that has some questions. Um, did you, Randy, unless Randy or Nick, you guys want to add anything further? Okay. okay. Right, so we'll go ahead and open this up to questions if anybody has questions. Good. Yeah, correct. I think it's Norm here. Yeah, yeah. That it's going to be the same type of. Hey, Chris, will you repeat the question each time? Sure. Um, so the question was: Are there going to be traffic impacts for the Acres and Goshen Railroad crossing? And I think the answer to that question, and Norm can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's going to be yes. The railroad's going to be working over the weekend, 24 hours on that crossing. So there's going to be detour routes and everything set up, right, Norm? That's correct. Okay. Just go ahead. Sure. Sure. So T closure just means that the, for example, for phase six, the west side of Demery is going to be completely closed, and then the Goshen, which is the street that tees into Demery, is going to be completely closed. So you will not be able to go like eastbound on Goshen from Acres like through phase six. Does that clarify enough for you? So this is kind of your, this is like your upside down T right here. So I can, I can say then that on Demery itself, north and south town traffic won't be as heavily impacted. It's only if you're turning on to, to go ahead. Uh, no, on, for, for phase, for phase five, um, Demery is only going to be southbound right here. So your only traffic is only going to be able to go southbound on Emory on phase five. And then for for phase six, um, traffic's only going to be able to go northbound on Emory. Yeah, sorry. I guess for Nick was saying to go ahead and comment on the orientation. So these maps are set up so that north is this way. So north is kind of like towards the right side of the page. So that this is uh, this is Demery right here, and this is Goshen right here. Understood. Go ahead. I have a question regarding bike lanes and pedestrian sidewalks. Is that going to be included in this finished project? Because it doesn't look like they're going to be so. Yes, they're they're going to be new accessibility ramps at each each crossing. And they're also removing and replacing a good part of the trail that's on the north side of um, Goshen as well. During construction, do, are the sidewalks for pedestrians going to be closed? Yeah, so that's a good, real good question. The question was, are the sidewalks for pedestrians going to be closed during construction? So what we are doing on the north side of the road, let me go back to uh, probably one of the first slides here. It's probably going to be best to answer that. So on this slide, which is the kind of the completed intersection, 
uh, north is actually up on this slide. This is Demery, this is Goshen. The question was, are pedestrians gonna be impacted, probably particularly related to the trail? The answer to that is yes. We're gonna like close that trail during construction. There's gonna be so many things going on right here from the railroad to the city contractor that we just feel like it's not gonna be very safe for pedestrians to go through there. So that trail is gonna be closed. We plan to be closed for acres to move on that side of the street on Goshen. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Okay, okay. good. So questions regarding alternate routes. As all of your alternate routes except for 63 go past the school, at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, are that, is that something you want afterwards, or is that something you want? <laughs> because all of those routes, except for Regan going to 63, go past a major school in yeah, the morning. Yeah. 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 So, so we're going to be meeting with my cell unit Mike next week to talk about some of the stuff related to schools. Um, so the answer is, yeah, it's going to be pretty difficult and. I guess one of the things that um, I mentioned earlier was you may need to choose a route where you go kind of backwards and go to what you're normally trying to do, you know? Yeah, so you'd have to go past Regan out somewhere because it's, it's even sure, I mean, there, there's no way around the school. Right. At eight o'clock yeah. in the morning is going to be a disaster. Yeah. And I guess during construction, what we're asking from the public is, you know, we're going to have to ask for everybody's patience because it's a, it's a super challenging construction project, and there's just, um, it's difficult on the north side of town. Like, it's just difficult on the north side of town. And I guess to kind of answer that question for you partly as well is that one of the issues we've got is that, you know, for, for railroad crossings, uh, in order to get like a new street crossing across the railroad, you have to give another one up. So it really like limits what the city can do, like as far as new crossing the north side of town. Is the city doing anything? light link other things for alternate routes so that you can get through these alternate routes easier? Yeah, the city um, we talked about, and I think, I don't know if you want to answer that a little bit more, Nick, about um, kind of looking at a lot of the traffic signal planning and everything on kind of, especially like on acres and some of those other streets to see if the, there's some tie-in options that might work out a little bit better than um, for the construction portion of the Ocean Project. I'll let Nick expand on that one a little bit here. My name is Nick Cassie, I'm the community development director. The acres corridor is one of the ones that we're going to look at the most because you have traffic signals and we control that and go straight through to 198. What we're going to do is we're going to pull the traffic timing for those, obviously uh, the north-south sections, try and get a little more green time for north-south. The problem you have with doing that though is each one of those signals are not interconnected hard right now, which means they're going to have, if you, walk, if you have a room full of clocks and you walk in the room and walk out, the clocks will drift. So what will end up happening is, is you'll have some of them in conflict. So during these construction phases, we're gonna have staff out there monitoring them. We may even have the option to go in there and put some GPS clocks so that they are all in sync and then hopefully keep that timing run because obviously all the Northwest, this is probably your major route that's gonna go through. Now the downside to all of this is we're gonna send out all the traffic to the 198 interchange. That unfortunately is controlled by Caltrain. So we're gonna have some limited ability to try and connect that, but we are gonna coordinate with them to see if we can get some green time through that interchange at the same time. Is there any chance 63 has that interconnect between? No, and not 63, which is that new one. Right. No, that's another state highway that's coming straight. Right. Yes. Have you considered also that there's rarely backups coming either way on the ocean, lengthening the Demery light, which shortening maybe a little bit, uh, other than the left turn from Goshen going north on Demery? Really yeah, during construction at the intersection of Demery and Goshen, we'll adjust the signal, if not turn it off and allow traffic to flow through a lot easier. But the problem you're gonna have is with some of the maps that were shown on the screen, you're reducing the lane down to one or two lanes and that's, you know, it's gonna yeah, still, yeah. but yes, we're gonna try and open that, that up as much as possible. Mind you that the main detour route when you do the T-closures is going to be Mooney up to Houston, back over to Demery. That's why we're doing the Houston rehabilitation now for at least one side of, of Goshen. And the other side will have to go around, which is why we're trying to tell everyone now, find an alternate route, be, be willing to leave five, 10 minutes early to, to test it out a little bit while we're starting to work, because when you get to the main closures, those two big phases, five, was it five and six or six and seven? Five and six, that's when you're gonna have your major traffic restrictions. 
guess the one other thing the city is doing with the Dimway and the Ocean project is they're going to be installing video detection cameras on the existing signals, uh, which are then going to get moved to the new signals. That's going to give the city traffic signal technicians a lot more flexibility to kind of like modify the traffic signal timing and zones and stuff like that. So it's going to be kind of a you know, trial and error process for the city techs to get this stuff flowing really good with some of those larger phases you see on the construction on their presentation. Good. Yeah, so the, the main portion of the question, and correct me if I'm wrong, is just the concern about the Redwood, Green Acres area, the kind of the effects of directing traffic to those areas is going to be. Um, and we're going to be meeting with the school district next week to talk about the school stuff, and it's definitely a point we'll bring up with the school district for you. I noticed on your slide that you Addison has been is with us, and we're not going to end up with a pole out in the asphalt. Yeah. You, you must live out my acres and rigor, right? I've been doing this for 35 years. <laughs> okay, so the question was, um, you know, about coordination with the railroad and coordinating underground utilities, because a lot of people around town have probably seen delays on some of our construction work projects related to uh, utility delays or things of that sort. So I guess then uh, I'll flip back to it real quick, back to the phase one, because that's for, for this project, um, we're planning to do the large majority of the utility underground work in phase one. Um, and we've got utilities for Edison. They're going to be going up and down this side of the road. We've got some um, street light relocations and Edison bulb adjustments and all that stuff that are going on on this side of the road. We've got some other effects to Comcast, AT&T, the Cal Water uh, relocations because the road is getting widened right here and all that stuff has, is being coordinated with those utility companies. We also sent out notifications with them and Connor is coordinating schedules with them. We've got railroad pre-con meetings with the railroad to kind of talk about their schedules and everything. So a lot of that stuff has been coordinated uh, the best it can be right now. <laughs> Well, are you at the completed intersection or in your hand up? Right there, right there? Yeah, the question is just like, what are those hash marks? That's basically just the area where they don't, the railroad doesn't want people to stop. Clear zone. So it's a clear, yeah, it's a clear zone. So um, this will basically be like a no vehicle area right here. Yeah, yeah, you'll see it around other intersections around town. And these are, it's hard to see on the handout that you have, but these are the railroad crossing arms right here. They're just making sure traffic stops right there. Good. Do you want to do it? Short answer, yes, there's considerations. Long answer, there's a lot of things that have to happen in order to do so. 
one the city has to forfeit a crossing somewhere in the city we have one that's in mind there's a small crossing in town that nobody ever uses but secondly we have to identify a future crossing ones that are on the, the map to be to be identified is the Chinwith crossing which then leads to Linwood there's another one at Robin and I believe there's a third that we were, we were anticipating but there's no funding available at this time it's all about the future planning years uh, but that would be the logical next step is there a ballpark I could give you a guess, but if you go back five years ago and ask people when we were going to do this, it, it, it's a lot of things that are hinging on this. So, I mean, I can't even put a, I wouldn't even want to. It's not even the cross. It's that they just opened up those streets on the ocean so we can get out of our neighborhood. Right. We have two ways in and out of our neighborhood. If there's an emergency, this is going to be, we're on the street. So the comment was just getting crossings to get to cross it. And to get on to this. And that's the problem, is the minute you're trying to get out of Goshen, you're crossing the railroad, and there's a lot of rules and regulations on trying to cross it. Right. So there's a crossing for the railroad, which is right. is the thing that's holding it up. With uh, all the major work with closing lanes and rerouting everybody through school districts or schools, how come did work isn't being done at night. Yeah, there is there is some discussion about that. Um, you know, one of the things is the city's noise ordinance for doing work at night um, is one of the reasons they decided to, um, to not do that at night. Um, and the other reason is that, you know, a lot of these big closures, like these big key closures, like we can't open that back up for traffic. So, um, so the thing that made the most sense was to go ahead and do that work during the day because we weren't going to be able to open up those roads back to traffic, um, just moving out of traffic, driving you know, in and around the construction zone, on up and down like deep cuts in the roadway. Um, there's a lot of safety issues associated with that. A lot of times when we do night work, it's stuff that you know we can open up roadways back at the end of the morning, like we get them open back up. Um, so a lot of the a lot of the stuff on this project, it just wasn't really applicable for doing a lot of night work on it. You know, there's, you know, it's, and it's pretty complicated because we have a lot of the railroad involved doing uh, the railroad's crossing arms. We have contractors out in the middle of the median on the MRE that, you know, around the closed lanes for just for, for their safety when they're doing the work and everything. Uh, a lot of them are just, permanent lane closures and that's why we ended up not doing the project at night. Um, there's also like just um, for a lot of the contractor personnel it's a big safety issue doing things at night. There's also like a huge cost associated with doing things at night. So all that kind of added up um, is kind of why the city decided to go ahead and do this work during the day. So I guess a question from the Facebook Live thing is, what is being done on Houston Avenue? Are there traffic lights being installed on Houston Avenue between Demery and Mooney? If so, where are they going? Um, that's a good question. And the answer to that question is, um, for during construction of Demery and Ocean Project, the city has a set of temporary traffic signals that they're gonna be installing at County Center in Houston to kind of help traffic move along for that what used to be the four-way stop right there. So we're going to put those temporary traffic signals up at what used to be the old four-way traffic stop right there um, during the project to help move traffic along. And I think Nick can correct me if I'm wrong, but we're also planning on, the city's also planning on coming in after the Demery and Goshen project or somewhere close thereafter, installing permanent traffic signals at that intersection as well. In the spring. In the spring. Yeah. As far as, How many days are, are people going to have to deal with it? Six, six days, 90 days? So, the project is going to start on July. So, the question was basically how long is the duration of construction for the no, entire I mean, day? Like, we're looking at school days mainly, because that's for most of the traffic. Okay. 
Yeah, as far as, so the question was duration of the project and length of working days. So the number of working days the contractor has under the contract is 140 working days to complete the work. An anticipated um, start date, July 9th, probably going to finish sometime around the beginning of February is what we're guessing. Or spend some of February. Well, out of that, how many of those are school days? How many of those are school days? Um, I would be... I'd have to take a guess at that. Could be everything from like August 15th, probably think that's when school starts this year, through like the beginning of February. So quite a few. So the next question is, what is this? What is this improve? So once I mean, there's a lot of complaints. Everybody's uptight. I mean, it's going to be a mess. But what does it improve when it's done after 190 days? Is it is it going to be a relief or is it going to be So the question was, what what is it going, going to improve? Yeah, I mean, because you said this goes back how many years? That you At least five years that I've been here, that this has been work being designed coordinated. So what one thing is safety, uh, the crossing of the railroad tracks. Right. Uh, another item is, if you recall, Daryl's put in a southbound lane that's really not being used. So we're going to take take advantage of the southbound uh, through lane on Demarie, which will become a dedicated right turn lane. So you get some dedicated right turn lanes for north and southbound, as well as east and westbound at the intersection. So you can see here, before you never had those right turn lanes. So the, the you co-mingled your through and your rights. And by doing that, once you had a right turner, they, you know, they may stall or, or stop the through traffic, slow the through traffic down. And then the last item on top of all that is your dual lefts uh, that are off of Goshen. By putting a dual left in, you're actually doubling your capacity, which then you can take your green time that would normally be uh, provided for the left turners and you can shrink it. And by doing that, then you get more green time to north, south, and east, west. So it's, it's, it's giving us more capacity to change that timing and improve the circulation through the intersection. So it's significant improvement. Yes. And, and then the signal at Houston and the signal at Demery will be synced. Part of this project is to connect them with, with conduit and then we have a, another project that's coming on the horizon that will be using congestion air quality money that will install the fiber. And we have our traffic management center that's being built. There's a lot of projects being built all at the same time. So yes. <laughs> Thank you. Go, go ahead. My question is about, you know, after listening to the young lady here, her concern, um, what are the benefits So, so the question is, is there going to be like a video record of the presentation? Yeah. Okay. I guess, um, video record. Allison, oh yeah. Are we going to have a video record of the presentation? Yeah, what we can do is down, yeah. <laughs> so this will be on our Facebook page, but I understand not everyone is active on social media. So what we'll do is you can just give me a couple hours tomorrow morning. I'll download this and we'll host it on our website, faisalia.city backslash Goshen Demery. Does that include a written transcript? Uh, no. It will not include a written transcript. Okay. Go ahead. Will there be any more additional meetings like this? Just so that way once the construction does get started, if there are additional concerns, or so that we can hear feedback and say that you guys are planning on meeting with the Trail Unified. You know, are we going to hear feedback from that meeting that traffic control people about their involvement? They need to be in it about when it's through. Yeah. So the question was in general, and correct me if I'm wrong, are there going to be any uh, other public outreach meetings after um, this public outreach meeting? And there wasn't, we didn't plan to have any more public meetings after this one. Um, but we are meeting with my cellular from the school district. We're talking about them on different different options to notify the parents of the schools. Um, and I guess if there was some if there's major a, interest or need, need to have another public outreach meeting, I think the city would definitely be 
open to doing that. We could, like for the schools, reaching out to the parents of Visalia Unified School District, uh, children is great. My daughter doesn't go to Visalia Unified. Oh, gotcha. But I still go through that intersection and I feel for the parents and the kids that uh -huh. do have to, because like I said, I have a nice chance of going through it. Okay. But, uh, you know, it's not going to necessarily reach out to everyone. Yeah, Kurt, so the, the question was, is that if you have students that aren't part of Visalia Unified and how you're going to be notified about things, um, I guess if you have concerns during construction at the bottom of that, and now there's actually a phone number on there, it's my office phone number, so if you're having like real problems during construction or um, if you feel, that you feel like the city needs to hold another public outreach meeting for everybody, right, so feel free to like call me and let me know, like we can talk it over with the city and see what we can do. Then. Well, good morning. I'm Henry Norris. Uh, today, when construction starts, it's going to get a lot of attention. What's going to be done about people turning negative in the gym? Is that going to hold up the traffic right now? Yeah. Um, we'll have to. So, the question. Yeah, okay. So, I guess the question was is that there's a lot of traffic congestion turning left into the N shaped gym. Um, and right now, so originally as part of this project, we actually had restriping of Goshen to have a center left turn lane, which will alleviate some of that uh, traffic construction, I'm sorry, restri uh, center left turn on Demery, thank you. So that would alleviate some of that traffic trying to exit and enter off of uh, Demery into like in shape or even some of the residential locations. Uh, because of the cost that came in and the budget that was set up, we actually eliminated that part. However, there are certain functions that are included that will line it up so that later on, if we find have the money or have the ability to do the funding later, we can restrike that section from the south part to where this ends all the way down to 198, and then put the left turn, center left turn in to address that. So oh, there any construction, is there any that is in shape that I notify that that's preferably not to turn in? Because as it is, there's going to be a point where you're going to have probably one lane going northbound, and then one lane going northbound, including the back ocean. Correct. They try to turn, it's going to back down all the way to one So your, your comment was, has in been informed? Yeah. Everybody within the area from Shirt to, to, Dem, Shirt to Dinuba, well, the northern city limits down to 198, they all received that car that a lot of you have held up. So we informed them, we, we did it for both businesses as, res, as well as residents. We'll, we'll keep that in mind too when we're looking at traffic control plans for the construction budget. A couple questions on traffic. What is your traffic count, say, for January 1 of this year, coming into the project and then looking at how you're going to add a bit of lane and all this kind of thing? Where are we starting with traffic? And then I'm going to ask you if in five years, what's the 10 year? for this same thing. Uh, the question was about kind of traffic counts for the intersection out there. Um, that's kind of a pretty detailed design question. Um, if you don't mind, we'd like to talk to you about that kind of afterwards, because uh, it's a pretty detailed type stuff. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit then. Okay. I'm looking at your map. Okay. I see a lot of lefts, north and south. So you double the number of lefts going north and south. If I'm coming from Goshen, I got a right on that. Where's all that traffic and how is it all going to filter? If it's all coming down south uh, from the Riggin side and then it's going out to Goshen or wherever, you're going to have the same amount of traffic coming back. Well, you're accommodating the Demery component. Well, what about the Goshen component from the two different directions? You're dispersing and yet you're not reaccumulating. We can talk to you on that, but in a nutshell, when you make a right turn, you can do the right turn on red, but the left-hand turns have to turn on the specific phase of the signal, so we're, we, that's the reason why you, you need additional capacity for the left turns. So will there be more police uh, in the areas of the school when this is all going down, when it's all shut down, when there's a lot, a lot of traffic by the schools? Will you have more officers kind of hanging out? 
Do you want to hear us on the time on that yeah, and the question was, are we going to have more police officers and enforcement around some of the schools, kind of on the alternate routes and everything? So we're going to let the Vice Lady PD kind of speak to that. Hi, Lieutenant Dominguez, uh, Vice Lady PD. That's uh, our actual traffic sergeant, uh, Mark Feller. And basically our role in this will be to coordinate with, uh, with staff, with Four Creeks. Um, we're also meeting with the school district. We're going to be, uh, we're going to be at the meetings. And really the primary function here is traffic mitigation, folks. It's not traffic enforcement. It's to make sure that the flow of traffic continues and if we have something that's stalling traffic, that we open that up uh, as soon as possible. Uh, traffic enforcement, as you folks uh, may understand, sometimes instead of alleviating the problem, may, may cause more issues. So, so the purpose, our purpose here will be to make sure that uh, you know, the next seven months works out as well as, uh, as it can and you know enforcement always remains a component but uh, we're going to be working with staff we're going to be working with the school district and we currently have traffic officers assigned to each of our locations all of our traffic officers are aware of what the plan is um, our traffic sergeant will be uh, will be at school dis uh, district meeting tomorrow and we will have a game plan but uh, i just want to stress traffic enforcement obviously remains part of what our duty is but really traffic mitigation is, is what we're focused on with this project. Anything to add, Mark? No, that's excellent. I think one of the, one of the biggest things is, um, you know, for the public, I mean, we're gonna have to ask you guys to be like patient during construction because a lot of the city streets are gonna be affected. I mean, if you can leave a little bit earlier in the morning or leave a little bit later in the afternoon to kind of spread the traffic out a little bit, that's gonna help a lot. And everybody just kind of like working together throughout the construction process is gonna be a really big deal. Just wanted to go back to the uh, SAPD real fast. It, it, not so much, I don't think we're asking for enforcement as much as presence, right? Yeah. It, it, having the presence up north will happen at least for the first three weeks after that each phase starts and people have to get used to moving around, right? At least having a presence up there will cause some of it. I've seen some pretty crazy drivers when there's an accident in Goshen and, and Demery trying to get out of the school past Green Acres, right? So I, I think that, I don't know if we're really looking for enforcement. Right. And, and yes, that, that's one of the things we're gonna be looking at. Um, I can think of a few intersections where, you know, a presence, Maybe something that uh, that's going to help, and I'm thinking Houston and Mooney, Green Acres, obviously this intersection here, um, Houston and Demery. And, and by the way, um, the great thing about you know the way the city works, and especially this project, is most of us live and work in this area, so so we're we're more than aware of what's going to go on. I go through that intersection a few times a day. You know, we we have to shuttle our kids between this area and Redwood. I have to get to and from. Uh, home and work through this intersection a few times a day. So we're gonna stress that our, our traffic officers, our motor officers are gonna be out there. A presence is a part of this whole thing. Uh, what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna clog up traffic, uh, <coughs> pulling folks over, riding a bunch of sites. We wanna be visible, we wanna have that presence. We wanna work with school staff, we wanna work with city staff, with the engineering staff. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna look at all the ways that we can make this work. And, and yes, you should see uh, you should see us out there. Um, just realize that the functions of the city continue, and even if we do have a, a traffic or a traffic officer assigned to these intersections, and something major happens on 198 on the opposite side of town, we're still going to have to respond to make sure that you know the flow is continuing throughout all parts of town. <laughs> I think that statement will be correct, except for phase two, where the railroad is doing their work across the memory. Go but to go, right? what's that? Go to go. Well, the, so just keep in mind that for phase five and six, those are permanent closures. So you, you, those will not go down. So for those five week periods, each for phase five and six, Goshen is going to be closed like during those those phases. But if I would walk in, I'd probably got a pretty good shot of getting through, I imagine, for except for those phases. I noticed on uh, Demery Avenue, the uh, 
posted speed limits? Have you dropped them five miles an hour? Is that right? Yeah. From, from Goshen Avenue south to 198, have you put signs in to reduce the speed? Is it speeding every time? Are they permanent or the orange signs? Uh, I don't think they're warning, they're white signs. Okay, so if they're permanent, then we've just recently had a uh, speed study that was completed and then presented to council, so they have been reduced or increased. We had a whole bunch that went across the city just recently and taken to council, so that's probably what's happening. Is that, that may have been that. Now, I have that seen to slow the traffic down for the project. No, and no the project that is, is the done, we go back up to 45 no, or more. No. That is a six, that is a posted speed limit for that road. It will stay at that speed. We will have possibly some reduction in speed for construction, but those are usually the orange ones. And, and I've seen some of that go through. So for example, if you drive down Houston, it, the paying attention to is a different story, but um, driving down Houston, it is posted at 25 with the orange. Ninety percent of your work is during the school year. Why are you starting at seven a.m. instead of eight or eight thirty, so that it's not so the the end the question was um, a lot of the school a lot of the work on the construction project is during the year, and why are we starting at seven a.m. instead of eight thirty um, for the. Phase one portion of the work where we're actually putting traffic control up and taking it back down, we are doing those those lane closures between 8.30 to 4 to try and avoid that morning school period. Um, but for a lot of the other phases, we're gonna have permanent traffic control set up that's gonna be out there until that phase of construction is done. Uh, so um, that traffic's gonna be affected 24 hours a day, and that was the reason for the, giving the contractor the option to look for longer work hours, is because that traffic control is gonna be uh, 24 hours a day out there until that work gets done. Any one last one? <clears throat> From uh, Goshen all the way to Highway 198, five lanes. That's are they the gonna question. take the five all the way, or are they gonna take the five lanes all the way down to 198? You got you got two north, you got four lanes now. But you put in the center turn lane. That's Demarine. That spreads well, everything Demarine out. Demarine. So Demarine. that's five lanes of Demarine between here and down to Highway 198. And right now you're just running the four. So you were speaking of Demarine, correct? Go to Demarine South. Correct. That one. Yes, that was part of the project to restrike that section of roadway and put in a fifth center turn, left turn lane. But by doing that, we would have to remove uh, the parking that's on either side and change some of the other access points for some of the residents. Um, that cost came in above the budget and we elected not to select that as part of our project. But we are doing some things such as addressing the postage boxes and uh, trying to get things lined up. So a lot of the ge geometrical items such as curb gutter is done part of this project. So that when we come back later, when we have funds to restripe it, we can do that at a future date. So it's we're trying to stage it so that we're ready to rock and roll mm -hmm. when we can do it later on. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, the dim the dimmery road work. Yeah. 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 South on does the construction go? It's not going that far south. This light blue line shows it pretty good. So the question was, how far, how far, how far south on Demery does the construction go? So this blue line is relatively representative of kind of how far we're going on Demery. I think we're, we may actually be somewhere like right around there, somewhere right around this area is where we're stopping, like with the roadway construction work on Demery. Are you going to, like the northeast corner and the northwest corner, uh, are those going to be the ultimate? Are those built as the ultimate? I mean. So the question is is this the ultimate configuration of the Demory Ocean intersection? Yeah, you know how there's a space on the right side when we go north? Yeah. Correct, yeah. Is, is that side going to get pushed to the ultimate? 
final order. Correct, yeah, so right now, the question is, is the, is this corner curve return gonna get pushed to be in like the ultimate position and line up with this existing curving under that's out there, right? Yeah. Yeah, you answer that question is yes. Like the curve return here that's on the northeast corner of Emory and Goshen is gonna line up with kind of the existing curving gutter you see out there in front of the, the pharmacy. So, yeah, so this is gonna be the, this is planned to be like the ultimate configuration right here. Yeah, but I was just wondering because I was looking at the picture and I don't think it doesn't look like that. I probably wouldn't see the curve. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. It's like yeah. right there. It's kind of on the aerial photograph way underneath. It's kind of hard to see. Okay. So, are they going to have to go ahead? Like, change configuration of the signal? How it runs? Uh, correct. Yeah. So, the question was, are they going to change the traffic signals there? Uh, the answer is yes. They're going to be putting new traffic signal poles up, uh, new accessible ramps, like pedestrian push buttons, is all the new stuff. And add detection also? Correct, yeah, the traffic signals are getting switched over to a bit be video detection instead of like run by loops. So it gives the city more flexibility to work with their timing and detection. Are you, are you, you're saying that that is not the final configuration? It is. So it this, is. this is the final So that curve sure. going down across the front of CBS, it's going to step back out like no. it does. No, no, no. It's no. no, it's. What is that? that curve like, on CBS is like right, right about there and it lines up okay. right with the new curve we got her. Okay, you're, you, just don't, you don't show the existing. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the, this these improvements, the line work on this page for the new improvements. And kind of that aerial photograph back there kind of shows existing, it's kind of faded out and hard to see. Yeah, if you look real close at the picture, what Steve was saying is that you can kind of see the existing curve return, like way out here in the roadway right now, like underneath on the aerial photograph, just kind of hard to see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess the question was from the Facebook, if we could kind of talk about how far the southerly limits are on Demery. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's pretty close to kind of the southerly limits of the kind of the business park that's there on the west side, kind of like pretty close to the interface between the business park and the in-shape parking lot. Does that help? Anybody else have anything else? Right. Now, this is a technical question because I know the intersection is run by a one seven. Are you going to update the cabinet and the computers? Yes. Twenty seventy. It's going to match what we already have to tie into our traffic signal. So I don't know the specs of it, but it's going to be an update controller. Okay. So the question was a pretty technical question about updating the upgrading the traffic signal controller. And the answer is yes, there's a new traffic signal controller going in as part of the project at the Denver Coast intersection. Okay. Hasn't the project just centered on the crossing on Goshen and Denver and now all the way down to 198? Because that's going to be affecting the uh, flow of traffic one way or the other. Who are we on that? Is there a project already within uh, the city? There is something going on to alleviate that issue? That is a big issue. Maybe repeat, repeat that question that part. My question is, how come we are just concentrating on the question of devotion and memory? How come we are going all the way down to 198? This answer would apply to a lot of places in town. If you drive down Demery and look at the existing homes and businesses and so forth, if you were to effectively widen it, we'd have to buy one house, pick a side of the road, buy every house down the road because they were built back at a time when the road was only going to be so wide. And you'll find that many places in town where Traffic circulation now really should have a wider road, 
but you can't. You're constrained by what was built, so you have to try to build the next arterial over to try to take that traffic. So you, you work where you can, when you can, and this is just the area we can. But this is the boundary. What's that? This is the boundary. This is not gonna be helping the issue with traffic. It's helping as much as we can. I guess, you know, it, it, I guess you, you are nodding your head like you wanted to buy all the houses down to 198. No, I get it. And, and yes, that's possible, but then we would not be able to do 20 other projects around town. So in a growing community, these are the problems we have. And, and I understand what you're saying. There's, there's so much we can do with the existing roadways. So we try to do what we can where we can. So yes, they can consider that. They could consider the option to try to do more with Demarine, but again, it's priorities. You're giving up five other things to do that, and yes, it's needed, although it may be that we need to build another east-west arterial to try to get people someplace else to come down. It's it's you know moving puzzle pieces around. I apologize No, I understand. I understand. What, what, what he's talking about is like the intersection south of Ocean, that's on fixed time. So it goes back and forth. So he's talking about Hillsdale, it switches back and forth. That's not gonna help motion. You mean so signal timing? Signal timing. Right. So if, if you don't put that on top recall, which is, it makes this the arterial, it ain't gonna help motion at all because gotcha. it keeps switching over to right. Hillsdale. So two things. One, we've got to monitor the traffic to try to adjust the signals to try to do better. And then what I think Nick alluded to before is with the traffic management center that we're putting in, we want to interconnect as many signals as possible so we can adjust them in real time, not just. I, I, that, but that's in the near future because that one doesn't have fiber optics. Yeah, right. I mean, you're talking running fiber across the city and that's yes. talking long term projects. Yes, true. But in the meantime, if you put video detection to alleviate the bottleneck here and north of Ocean, which is That'll help motion. I mean, like that, you'll make the Marie the main track. And we probably have like a city staff member that would like to talk to you about that after, if you're willing to stay after and talk about it. Any, any other questions? We'll have some city staff members and some other folks here to answer some questions if you have any questions besides construction. Otherwise, we really appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.